I invite you all to be seated, and I invite forward Lisa, who is our preacher today. Howdy, this is my helper, Olivia. <laughs> Can we hear me? Yes. All right, sweet. Okay, I'm going to tell you a terrible joke that you have probably already heard. The storm of the century is raging, right? It's been raining for days, and most people have fled the valley. But old Joe is stubborn. He's standing on the roof of his little house, and the water is lapping at his ankles, and he is praying to God to save him. The guy in a rowboat comes by, and he says, get in. And old Joe waves him away, going, no, no, God will save me. And the rowboat pulls away, and Joe goes back to praying. But soon the water is up to his waist. And now Joe is hanging on to the old TV aerial that he was too stubborn to take off his house, and a good thing too. And he's praying for God to save him. And a woman in a fishing boat comes by, and she's got a few others in her boat, and she steers alongside, and she says, get in! But old Joe waves her away and says, no, no, God will save me. But the rain keeps coming, and the water keeps rising. And now it's up to Joe's neck. And every once in a while, a wave comes and just covers him completely. He's exhausted and freezing. And finally, a helicopter appears with a big searchlight, flies overhead, and then it hovers over him and drops down a ladder. And a voice says over the loudspeaker, grab the ladder and get in. And so with the last of his strength, Joe reaches his hand up out of the water. And he waves it away, going, no, 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 God will save me. <laughs> and then the waters close over him, and he drowns. Hilarious so far, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Joe gets to heaven and sees God. He says, God, I was praying to you. Why didn't you save me? And God says, I sent you a rowboat and a fishing boat and a helicopter. What more did you want me to do? <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Courtesy laugh. I appreciate that. <laughs> Sometimes we indulge in magical thinking. How many times have you prayed to God for some miraculous deliverance to fall into your lap? For $100 to miraculously appear in your wallet? For those pants to miraculously zip without tearing? Yeah. <laughs> for that unfortunate email to miraculously unsend itself? <laughs> And mostly, it doesn't happen. And yet, both our psalm and our epistle today talk about how if we pray to God, our prayers will be answered. How does that work? OK, we are going to, are you helping? You're not helping. We're going to stick a pin in that just for a minute. All right, and leave that there. And we're going to talk about Giovanni Di Pietro Di Bernardone. He is a rich kid with rich friends, and he likes the high life. He likes nice clothes. He likes good food. He likes whatever the late 12th century equivalent of fast cars would be, <laughs> like maybe one of those sedan chairs, right, with the like, flames yeah. up the side and a bunch of cup holders. <laughs> yes. Yes. Love it. Giovanni's father was a wealthy merchant who loved all things French, including Giovanni's mother, a French noblewoman. He changed the name of his, of his infant son to Francesco, Frenchman, and groomed him to take over the family business. Oh. And while young Francesco did learn the family business, he also spent time as a soldier, where he was captured in a war and spent a year as a prisoner, and felt God calling him to a very different kind of life. Now, there are several different accounts of what happened next. But most agree that Francesco's father was angered by Francesco's desire to give all his money to the poor. And he punished Francesco by disowning him. Oh, that's just fine by Francesco. He went forth living a life of poverty, humility, and service. His most famous act, preaching to the birds about their duty to always sing God's praises, came out of his compassionate nature. He saw the beauty of the world around him as a manifestation of God's love and felt that it was his duty to exhort all living beings to worship God in thanks. And so here we are, 
joining with the animals in our lives, giving thanks for their love, and showing our appreciation for creation by having them blessed. But Francesco is also remembered for founding the Franciscan Order, a group of monks devoted to poverty and charity. Because Francesco wasn't just awake to the beauty and wonder of God's world, but also to the suffering in it. It's why God is not just the patron saint of animals, but also of anyone, 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 Bueller, but also of activists. So part of my reading for my lay preaching license is a book called The Prophetic Imagination, written by Walter Brueggemann in the late 1970s. And one of the main ideas of his book is that people allow themselves to be anesthetized to the suffering and injustice around them because they receive reassurance from their leaders that they don't need to, um, oh, that everything is fine. And he calls this the royal consciousness, okay? A leader's exhortation to the people that they don't need to examine the inequities of life or agitate for fundamental social change because most people are fed and housed and clothed, so what's the problem? That's how leaders stay in power, by convincing everyone that things are just fine. It was true in Old Testament times. It was true in the late 1970s. It's true now. So it can be hard to see the depth of suffering in the world, yes, most of us are inundated with news stories of natural disasters and man-made atrocities and the general decline of civil society, which apparently has been in decline since biblical times. <laughs> but modern times have pulled another layer of wool over our eyes. How many of you shop on Amazon? Yeah. Uh, have you ever bought something from a company whose name looks like a collection of high-scoring Scrabble tiles? Zig Zig yeah. What do you know about that company? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. And it used to be that if you needed something a little more rare, a little more niche, uh, there was always some little store in town that sold it. No more. Mostly, uh, those little specialty stores have been chased out of business by the one-two punch of COVID and Amazon. And that entire mom-and-pop ecosystem is almost gone. But those moms and pops haven't. All those suffering people are praying for some miracle to help them. Now, we're gonna unpin our little idea over here. God's gonna help us. God's gonna answer our prayers. And I'm gonna turn that idea back to front. Not how God is gonna answer our prayers, but how we can be the answer to someone else's prayer. Walter Brueggemann contrasts the royal consciousness where people are insensitive to other su others' suffering with prophetic imagination. So if we think of prophets as men and women who interpret God's word and will, then prophetic imagination is relying not on our leader's assurances, but on our interpretation of God's word and will for our ideas of what constitutes a fair and just society. Sometimes that interpretation can be at odds with societal leaders. The challenge is making sure that your actions in life are guided by what God wants for us, not what self-interested leadership wants. In our reading from Esther, her people are in trouble. They're not gonna be forcibly relocated into ghettos. They're not gonna be exiled to some hostile land. They're going to be destroyed. Every one of them is praying for God's help and protection. And that help came in the form of a woman who had the courage to expose a traitor and ask for salvation for her people. So many of you are answers to people's prayers. Everyone who works in Pip's pantry is answering someone's prayer, God, how am I gonna feed my family? Every one of you who helps make our shelter guests welcome for an entire month at a time is answering someone's prayer, God, give me the stability to start getting my life together. We can all be the answer to someone's prayers. Maybe we can be the helicopter, giving thousands of dollars to good causes. Maybe we can be the fishing boat, giving our love and time to help people in our community. Maybe we can be the rowboat, giving a kind word and a heartfelt smile to anyone we meet. But even if you are just a person 
on a discarded door, rowing yourself along with an old broom, you can still reach out your hand and say, get on. And with God's help, we'll get where we need to be. Amen. Amen. Amen.